The White House announced last week that President Biden intends to close a military detention center at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. The center was established by President George W. Bush in 2002 to house foreign terror suspects following the attacks on September 11th. Nearly 800 men have been held at Gitmo, but only seven have actually been convicted of their crimes. Carol Rosenberg joins me now. Carol has been covering Guantanamo Bay for The New York Times since the first prisoners were brought there back in 2002. Good to have you with us. So the Biden administration says it's conducting a formal review of the detention center. Our viewers no doubt remember when former President Barack Obama vowed to close Gitmo back in 2008. So remind us what happened when Mr. Obama tries, tried, in fact, to close a detention center. With fierce resistance from Congress, um, members of Congress uh, were opposed to closing it, in part because after some period of study, President Obama realized that closing Guantanamo meant moving some aspect of Guantanamo to the United States, picking up some of those prisoners that were in Cuba and bringing them to secure facilities possibly run by the military in the United States. And Congress would have, have none of it. They saw it as um, a security risk to the population and that somehow the, at that point, um, well, and, and that, it, it, excuse me, and that somehow moving those prisoners uh, who were held as war prisoners to the states would make the country less secure in some way than other prisoners who are held in federal prisons. I remember the outrage uh, when, it, when it was being discussed where specifically some of those prisoners might end up. So has congressional attitudes changed on this subject, or do you expect that President Biden could face similar obstacles? Well, President Biden said during the campaign that he could not close it without the cooperation of Congress. And as we know, he has um, a long relationship, certainly with members of the Senate, and is expected to take the lead on some of the more contentious issues in his administration. So if, if someone's going to be the great persuader, I suppose it's President Biden. It is not clear to me that public uh, sentiment has changed, although it is clear that through the years, the cost of holding detainees at Guantanamo has become ever higher because as you decrease the number of prisoners and not the number of guards, there are 40 detainees at Guantanamo today and 1,500 soldiers assigned to the detention operation, mostly National Guardsmen. The price per prisoner of holding them at Guantanamo and housing, caring for, clothing, um, and training those guards works out to over $13 million a year per prisoner. And so one of the arguments that those who are advocating closure are going to make perhaps even louder is that it just doesn't make sense economically. They're down to 40 prisoners, and it's not expected that if they need to move or that the number of people they would need to move to the United States would include all 40. Yeah, uh, I remember it was $445 million per year uh, to operate the facility. But, Carol, you mentioned that there's 40 prisoners currently uh, being held at Gitmo, including five of the men charged with planning the attacks on 9-11. Where would these prisoners be transferred if the camp were to close? I think it would be the, uh, let's see. The Department of Defense has looked at a series of sites where they might send them, uh, including uh, military detention sites they might use, former prisons, parts of other prisons. There's also some people are questioning whether or not the pres President Biden would bring back the idea of trying them in federal court. And if the, if the goal is to give them a trial, a civilian trial in federal court, the, um, the logical jurisdiction is New York. So because that's where the, the attacks, the brunt of the attacks took place, also the Pentagon. So conceivably, I suppose, in, in the Eastern District of Virginia. But it depends entirely on what the, the administration intends to do about these trials that have gone on for years and years in pretrial hearings and have not even reached even close to jury selection. You know, the coronavirus down there has just brought all military proceedings to a standstill for more than a year. And so what we're looking at is the inevitability that 
even the start of the 9-11 uh, trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and four others will come long after the 20th anniversary of those attacks that killed 2,976 people um, in, uh, in New York at the Pentagon and in a Pennsylvania field on September 11, 2001. You mentioned New York and the D.C. area as potential housing facilities for these prisoners. But I, I remember the outrage um, at the idea that somebody who had been involved with, uh, allegedly, um, the 9-11 attacks being held in New York. Is there any sense from your reporting that the will has changed? So the argument at the time was that somehow by moving them from Guantanamo to New York to a trial would put somehow a target on New York City because they would be tried in federal court in New York at the time. That was the concept. And, and I guess the, one of the things that this administration will have to do if they choose to move the trials to the New York area is persuade, persuade the public that they can secure them. The other, th there are other possibilities. First of all, not all 40 prisoners would be moved. Many of these men, at least six, are cleared for transfer. So one of the first signs that this administration is serious about uh, trying to move toward closure would be establishing um, a mechanism at the State Department to negotiate safe, secure transfers to other countries. The Trump administration dismantled that office of, for the closure of Guantanamo special envoy and. At, at this moment, in, in terms of um, the Biden administration, no real personnel have been identified as the top policy people at the three key places that would be involved in working on closure. The Justice Department, so they could address the tr question of trials, and if they would, were to negotiate, for example, guilty pleas to get um, past this uh, trial phase, which would require making these cases not death penalty cases, two of them are. Um, the State Department, which would need to negotiate transfers and resettlements in some instance or repatriations of the prisoners who the U.S. decides they no longer need to hold at Gitmo and um, are not, not eligible for charges. And then the Department of Defense, which runs that very expensive prison down at Guantanamo. All right. Carol Rosenberg, thank you. Thank you, Lena.